Okay, here we are at Titan Machine Tool today. I don't know how this video is gonna work, but we're gonna try to broach a keyway in this sprocket. I got this sprocket here. We're gonna broach a keyway in it. It's got a one inch bore. Customer ordered it and he didn't realize that the shaft was keyed. So we gotta put a keyway in this sprocket. We're gonna do it on the the Famco Arbor Press. How you how you boys and girls out there like this Arbor Press? Let me get a kind of back up. See this thing. I don't want to fall down. Better watch where I'm going. Look at that. Whew. She's a big one. Famco 6C Arbor Press. Famco Machine Company, Racine, Wisconsin, USA. Oh yeah, she's a big one. She wants to hurt you, so you gotta be careful. She took a hit one time though. She went down, down goes Frasier. She was fixed. Somebody put the old weld job back on her right there. I think she fell down twice because this hand wheel's been repaired too. She's got a miss, couple missing couple missing pegs on her and she's been fixed as you can see right there so this repair was a much cleaner nicer repair so she went down hard whoever fixed that the first time did a nicer job fixing the hand wheel than whoever fixed it the second time but nonetheless there it is so anyways after showing off the press I'll show you how we're gonna broach. We're gonna broach this keyway here. I put a scribe line on the center just to, just to eyeball it. There's no timing on the gear. There's, there's no features on the gear or the teeth don't need to be timed to anything. So we can just put the keyway in anywhere. It doesn't matter where it goes. So in order to broach the keyway, it's gonna be a quarter inch keyway. A little workbench I got here. We got the broach. Okay, what is it, Dumont? What do we got? Yes. Dumont quarter inch brooch. So that's what we're gonna cut that key with. Here's our bushing. You need a bushing, a guide bushing to do this. Specific to the size of the bore. So this is a bushing for a one inch bore. There we go right there, one inch bore. And the bushing also has to be sized for the brooch because these brooches come in different sizes so it has to be cut to guide the proper size brooch that you're using you can buy them you can make them whatever you need to do but you need the right combination so you need the right size for the proper bore and it has to be notched for the right size brooch smaller ones obviously have smaller bushings so that's what we got here so we're going to take the guide bushing we're going to put it in here i don't know how this is going to work out doing one-handed like i said there's no timing so it doesn't matter but i'm just going to use that guide mark right there just to eyeball the center of it i'm going to have to put a set screw in it too set screw will go in over here so that it locks the key down into the shaft set screw comes down pushes on the key locks it into the shaft so we'll put a set screw over here after so we're gonna take the brooch. The bushing is basically cut so that when you push these things through, they're tapered. So it's taking a smaller cut at the front when you first put it in. These are all designed to work so that when you put the bushing in, you can drop the brooch in and take this first pass. And as you can see, the teeth get taller. So it takes more of a cut. Let's see if we can get rid of that shadow. So the brooch is tapered, so when you put it in the hole, the first cut, say, is taken 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, or whatever the amount is. I think it's half, half the amount. I measured it. It's going to take probably two or three passes to do. So we just put it in there like that. And then after we pass that thing through, we're going to use the Abba press. We'll line it up here. So that when we come down with the press, we can push on that brooch fairly central to it. And we're essentially gonna just force that thing right through there. 
you know? It does cut, it's designed to cut. So we're, we're not forcing it, we are step it, we're step cutting it, notching it, doing little tiny notches. Choppy, 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 with a little time. So I'll saturate that with oil, and I'll push that guy through. And then we'll take a measurement inside the bore, plus the width of the key, see what we got, the depth of the key. Doesn't take it all in one pass. So after we do that, we keep the bushing lined up, the brooch will line it back up. So even if it did turn a little bit, when you put the brooch back in, you just gotta find the key that you cut the first pass, put that baby back in. And then when we put it in, we got shims. I got a variety of shims here. I'm not gonna need this many. I'll probably only need two of them. But 10 thousandths, 15, 25, 30, 35, 50, 62, 80. So you stick the shims in, in the bushing like that. So then it pushes the brooch out. Pushes the brooch out. If that shim is 80 thousandths, well, after this guy goes through, it's gonna take another 80 thousandths off the sprocket and make the keyway depth that much deeper. So that's what we do. We'll put the brooch in, we'll take the first pass. Put it in there. I'm working one-handed, you know. Sorry about that. I got some oil today, I'm using something different today. This stuff's got a little more viscosity to it, so it's gonna be a little more clingy when I put it on the brooch. See how we go, it's running down the brooch there. It's a little more clingy. The other stuff I got is kind of watery. So this bad boy right here needs lots of lubrication. Everything works better with lubrication. We we'll bring the, the head of the press down, make contact with the brooch right there. Give it a little push with the hand wheel. Get it started, and then I can only push so much. Then I gotta use the big old handle up here. I'm doing this one-handed, people, so please be patient with me. So I got the old handle up here now, and I'm gonna mechanically... See, we got a, a little gear rack up here. So that's what we're doing. We're working that, and we're gonna push this big, big ram down now, and force that brooch through. Next cut. I ain't got so much stroke, so. And when we get to the bottom, it's just gonna push through. Oh, this video might suck. Air compressor. I know this video is gonna suck now. There you go. So we passed the brooch through first pass. Ah, damn that air compressor. This is the only one I'm doing too, so it's not like I can start the video over. I'll take the brooch out just to show you. So there's the first pass right there. It's not finished to size yet. The quarter inch width is there because the brooch is ground to the width you need. So we take our dial caliper and we measure it like this so we know what that is right there. So we're at one inch .062, so that was half. That was half of it. We want to go 125 plus a little more. So I'll stick an 062 ship in there and repeat, repeat the process. Pass the brooch through it again. We'll shim the, bro shim the brooch out. 60 thousandths, take another pass. And then it'll be pretty damn close to size. I might stick another 10 in just to make a little additional clearance so that it goes on easy. On this side, it doesn't much matter if, if you take a little too much because the set screw is gonna hold the key 
locked into the shaft anyways. So, I mean, essentially the keyway could come all the way up the hand and it really wouldn't have any functionality other than your set screw would have to stick way the hell out in order to hit the key. So even if you go a little 10 or 20 extra, it's not gonna make much difference because the set screw locks it in the shaft. And the height of the key determines how much engagement is in the sprocket. So it'd be a quarter inch key. So it's gonna have an eighth of an inch engagement in the shaft and an eighth of an inch engagement in the sprocket. Essentially. All right, 10 minutes, there we go. Broaching, lousy video, lots of talking, lots of background noise. But I can't do a redo because I don't have another sprocket. So that's that. Titan Machine Tool signing off. See ya.